Jake in Tokyo writes, is speaker break-in a myth? Mm -hmm. There are three points that seem counterintuitive to the idea of speaker break-in. Now, number one, if the speakers are supposed to be rigid, wouldn't break-in, making them softer, cause them to lose their structural integrity? Mm -hmm. If break-in does occur and affects the sound quality, then why does it not continue to break after a certain point, thus wearing out the speaker? And finally, if speakers are just like a pair of new jeans, why is the so-called break-in period around 50 hours rather than a few years? Those are great questions, Jake. Good thing that's not on. That could have been like a shower of sparks. <laughs> Speaker break-in is not a myth. It is absolutely correct. And it is more, just like electronic break-in, is not a myth. So let's look at what is actually breaking in. And I'm going to break it, not to make a pun here, into two categories. The crossover and the loudspeaker drivers. Okay? So the crossover is kind of easy. You've got capacitors. And capacitors are mechanical devices. They Usually you have, if it, in a good crossover, you have film capacitors. Um, you might have some big nonpolar electrolytics. All of those need energy going through them to form properly to do what capacitors do over time to sound better. And we as manufacturers probably should spend more time forming capacitors. It's what it's called. And you can do that with voltages and, you know, but it's a lengthy, expensive process. And we'd rather because we've got to pass those expenses on to our customers. And I'd rather save you a few bucks and just say, look, it's true. Play music through it. And when you do, that capacitor, that crossover will form over time and sound better. And once it forms, it stays formed. So that's going to be a lower cost option for you. You get the same results. Life's good. Now, the bigger part of speaker break-in has to do with the soft parts, not the rigid parts. So take a woofer as an example. Woofers have a tough job. A woofer cone has an impossible task. It needs to have as low mass, as light as possible, and be as rigid as possible, because you don't want it deforming and yet you don't want it to have mass. And those two kind of conflict, right? Because, you know, hey, the, the easiest way to get something not to, to break down or, or be deformed would be to make it out of a heavy piece of metal. But then the amplifier takes too much energy to get it moving, and then it doesn't have enough energy to stop it, so you get overhang. So what you want is the lightest, lowest mass material that is strong and tough. Like in our speakers, we use composites of all kinds of stuff, Roacel foam, carbon fiber, all strong, light, low mass elements. But those things don't break in. Those things remain static. What breaks in is the suspension system of a speaker. So what does that look like? Well. The two basic parts of a speaker's suspension are called a spider and a surround. Now the surround is the thing you see that surrounds the cone. It goes around like that and it's what makes the cone stay there and not you know, fall down and it moves back and forth with the cone. The spider, and that's the front part of the speaker. The spider is the back part of the speaker. Where the, where the cone narrows down like this and hooks up through the voice coil. And that spider is a corrugated piece of material. And together, the spider and the surround are pliable and they have a certain amount of flexibility. And over time, that gets into its comfort zone by being played or breaking in and it gets less stiff, it just opens up 
and life's good. So those are the main elements of speaker break-in, which for sure is not a myth. Okay. Thanks for the question. Take it easy. Thank you.